Hi, my name is Jonathan, and this is a level one bowspring practice that focuses on broadening the upper back. As opposed to narrowing the shoulder blades and squeezing them together, broadening your upper back allows you more fullness of your breath to feel lighter and more spacious. The physical aspect to encourage the back to broaden easier is keeping your elbows in the forward plane. So come to a comfortable seated position and lift your hands forward in front of you and specifically your elbows. Then bend your elbows and touch your fingertips together in globe hands and close your eyes. When your elbows are in the forward plane, it offers you the freedom to broaden into your upper back more. Press your fingertips into each other, starting from the outside and going inward. Press the ends of your thumbs together, then the pinky fingers, the index fingers, the ring fingers, and finally the middle fingers, till you feel a charge, an engagement. And with that charge, breathe fully on all sides of your rib cage. So your rib cage has something to press outwards into, a strength and a tone. When we narrow the shoulder blades, it's in a way narrowing a perspective, a viewpoint. And when the viewpoint gets narrowed, opportunity is missed, details are missed. So seeking to have a bigger picture view of the world, a broad, vast view, so nothing gets missed, everything is seen. Open your eyes and bring your hands forward, come into all fours position, hands and knees. In hands and knees, push your arms straight and lift your rib cage slightly higher away from the floor until you feel your shoulder blades broadening away from each other and your upper back toning. At the same time, allow your belly to descend lower down towards the floor. Pull your hands towards your knees and push your knees forward towards your hands. Press the tops of your feet down to lift the fronts of your ankles and push your knees out to the sides. Then lean over to your right hand and dome your left hand. Curl your fingers close to each other and push both arms straight to keep your rib cage light and lift it. Then lower your left hand bright to the floor, lean to the left and dome your right hand. Push the fingertips down, lift your rib cage higher. Keep your hips back and push your knees out to the sides. Then lower your right hand bright, go back first side, lean to the right, and this time option is to lift your left hand into hand mirror. Bring the palm in front of your face with your elbow bent, and specifically keep your elbow in the forward plane. When your elbow's in the forward plane, it allows you the opportunity to broaden and widen your shoulder blade away from the midline. Then lower your hand down and switch sides. Lean over towards the left, dome your right hand, and then hand mirror. Bend the elbow, palm in front of your face. If you like to practice with your phone beside you, you can also take a selfie of yourself. Push your elbow down towards the floor, fill through your upper back, then lower your hand down. Weighting both hands, lift your left leg back behind you into square leg position. Bend your knee 90 degrees and push your knee down into an imaginary resistance. As you do that, keep your glutes lifting up. Then lower your left knee and switch sides. Lift your right leg back behind you. Knee to the height of your hip, back of your knee 90 degrees, Foot in a flexed position, push your knee down, send your hips further back. Then lower your knee, sit your hips towards your heels into spring load position, a position where you're ready to lift up, but not quite. Tuck your toes under, push your knees out, keep your glutes lifted. Be strong in your legs so much you could lift one hand, then the other hand, then with your toes tucked, Lift your hips up and back into crouching cat position. Separate your feet hip-width distance apart. Push your arms straight. Then 
lean over towards the right and dome your left hand. Push your arms straight, make your rib cage buoyant so it floats away from the floor, it resists gravity. Then lift your left hand, bring your hand into hand mirror position, elbow pointing down, broaden through your upper back. Then left hand down, switch sides, lean to the left, dome your right hand, keep your knees bent, sit bones tilting up, push your arms straight, and then option to lift your hand, hand mirror position, elbow bent, palm facing your face, and then hand down. Hand mirror is better than palm facing face pose. Lift your left leg back behind you now, square leg position. So knee bent 90 degrees, push your knee down energetically, send your hips further back, then foot down and lift your right leg back. Push your arms straight, keep a lightness, elbows in the front plane to broaden through your upper back and bring your attention there by breathing fully. Lower your foot, step your feet part way forward, come onto fingertips, standing forward fold, bend your knees forward, push your knees out to the side, then inhale, rise up, place your hands to your knees, recovery position, just step the feet a little bit closer together, hip width distance, and rise up, earth pose. I'm just feeling the difference. If the elbows go into the back plane of the body, the shoulder blades will have a tendency to squeeze together. Instead, reach your arms forward, and it gives you the advantage of broadening and filling into the upper back. Open your chest, lift your chin, then hold on to opposite elbows, genie arms position, and with the elbows forward in front of you, push your elbows out into the hook of your fingers, with your knees bent and your groins moving down and back, twist over towards the left. Take your left ear towards your left shoulder, lift the side ribs, and then turn back to center and go over the other way, twist over towards the right, lifting up the left side rib cage. Turn back and then go first side again over towards the left, except this time lift your left foot and slowly step it back into side coil position. So turn your left foot in, bend both knees, arc over towards the right and place your forearm to your thigh, hand to your hip to start with. Curl your right fingers into seed hand, which is just a soft fist where the knuckles are staggered and your thumb is to the outside of your index finger. Then with your back knee turned in, broaden and widen your sit bone on the left and even grab your butt with your left hand and lift it up. From there, cup the back of your head, left hand, and notice if the elbow goes up to the sky, then the shoulder blades squeeze together. Anytime I teach a class where someone is unfamiliar with bowsprit and I say hold the back of their, your head in this pose, they'll point the elbow up. So hug the elbow in, use that to get broad through your upper back, and then lift your chin, reach the elbow towards the front, pulse a little bit forward and back, then bring your left hand down to meet your right hand, two seats together, push with your feet, inhale, rise up, and turn your right foot in, bend both knees. With both knees bent, push the fingers into each other, fill and broaden through your upper back, and then with knees bent, hinge forward at your hips, open your hands, open your fingers, touch the fingers down in dome hands position. Coming into single arm hand mirror, so lean to your left hand, lift your right hand, hand mirror. Imagine hooking a cable in front of you so you could pull your rib cage forward as you move your hips further back and your sit bones up. Then for, for a moment, lift your left hand to hover. And then place both hands down, hands bright, even lean forward onto tiptoes. Bring your heels back down. 
dome your right hand, lift your left hand into hand mirror. Make that imaginary hook, pull your rib cage forward, sit your hips back, pulse a little bit forward and back, move your rib cage so that it's lighter, it's freer. Then hand down, turn your right foot forward, rise back up into side coil position, bring the two seeds together, inhale, rise up to stand, push off your back foot, step forward, earth position, arms in front of you. When the arms are in front, notice if there's a tendency to plug the arms back and squeeze the shoulder blades together. Keep your arms pushing forward, then weight your right, or pardon me, your left foot, the correct foot, and step your right foot back. This time, just stay in a lunge position. Place both hands to your knees, turn your knees in slightly, and use that to move your groins down and back. Find the arch in your low back, and with that arch, match it with the roundedness of your upper back. Bring the arms forward, bend your elbows, bring two seats together. Push your elbows out to the sides to broaden the sides of your ribs. Pull your hands down to lift your rib cage up. Then gentle twist over towards the left. As you twist to the left, keep the upper back full and sit your hips back towards the right heel. Pulse a little bit forward and back, then push off your back foot, step forward and switch sides. Weight your correct foot, the right foot, and step your left foot back. Place both hands to your knees. And when you have the hands to your knees, you have two advantages. One is you push the knees forward into your hands to move your hips further back. The other is you have something for your hands to push into to fill your upper back. Then lift your arms, bend your elbows, two seats together, strengthen your arms all the way, sit your hips back, pulse a little bit with your legs, then twist over towards the right. As you twist to the right, even encourage the knees to go in a little bit to move the hips further back, then push your knees laterally to the side, lift your rib cage, feel a strength, a buoyancy, a lightness, then turn back to center, push off your back foot, step forward, go into genie arms position, and see if you can remember the non-dominant way that you grant wishes. So hold your elbows the other way, push your elbows out to the side, broaden through your upper back, weight your left foot, and slow and steady, step your right foot back behind you, side coil position, turn the foot in slightly, forearm to thigh, hand to hip. And when the hands to the hip, that when the elbow starts to point back behind, that's when the shoulder blade squeezes together. But just having the hand of the hip to feel the position of the pose, in particular, this case, the low back, make your low back move in and up. So you get the arch of your low back. Then cup the back of your head, hug your elbow in like you're wearing forearm earmuffs, reach the elbow in front of you, in this case, in front of your eyes, push your head back into your hand, and then extend your elbow towards the front of your mat, pulsing a little bit forward and back. Then bring two seats together, push with your feet, inhale, rise all the way up, step your right foot forward, pause, weight your right foot, step your left foot back, but point your toes, bring your knee to the floor, sit your hips back, and step your right foot back, come into all fours position, hands and knees. In hands and knees, push the arms straight, lift the rib cage higher, but drop your belly towards the floor. Push your knees out to the side, feel your glutes lift and engage. Then lean to your right hand, dome your left, lift your left hand hand mirror, 
and also lift your right leg back behind you into square leg position. Hold strong, keep the rib cage light and your belly dropping low. Push the left knee out to the side while you hug the left heel in. Then lower left hand, lower right knee, and switch sides. Left leg goes back, dome your right hand, make your rib cage light, then lift your right hand, hand mirror, pull your knee down, sit your hips back. You could still imagine hooking that cable, pulling your rib cage forward, but keep your upper back broad, lifted, and full. Then hand down, knee down, tuck your toes under, and lift up, crouching cat position. This time in crouching cat, option to lift your left leg out to the side, open leg position, dome your left hand, stay here steady, right knee bent, sit your hips back to the right heel, and lift your left hand, hand mirror position. Keep the upper back broad, and then as smooth as possible, from this position, slide forward into falcon pose. So cross your shin in front of you, bring your shin down, left hand down, hook your right knee with your left ankle, keep your hips back, rib cage broad, and come down onto your elbows. Curl the fingers into a soft fist, tone your arms strong, keep your rib cage lifted, while at the same time push your knees out to the sides to make your glutes lift on the rise. Then pull your elbows towards your knees to move your rib cage forward. Okay, stay here, or to test the upper back fullness, rise up, and I couldn't do this for months and months and months until I learned to fill into the upper back while keeping the hips back. But fingertips, maybe lift up into globe hands position, or you can cup the back of your head, ecstasy arms, keep your elbows forward. If the elbows go to the side, the shoulder blades squeeze, sit your hips back, lift your wrists and your elbows skyward, then hinge forward, plant your hands, and move back, crouching cat position. Push your arms straight, Bend your knees slightly, tilt your sit bones high into the air, then lift your right leg out to the side, dome your right hand. Stay here, or lift your right hand, hand mirror, keep the elbow pointing down, a fullness in your upper back, push your right knee forward, sit your hips back, then slow and steady, falcon pose, other side. Point your left toes, fill into your upper back, and then let the entire torso come down at the same time. So it's not just the heart melting and the head sinking down. Keep your belly low, push your knees forward, and your knees out to the sides. Use your elbows to pull back to your legs to move your rib cage forward. And notice the difference between one outer thigh compared to the other. One might be more open, less open. And you also may already be fairly open in your hips and you're just gaining more strength. The strength happens by pushing your knees out to the sides to lift your glutes up. Stay or come into a little bit of a balance. Back bend, fill into your upper back, then lift your hands, globe hands position. Elbows point out to the side. Rib cage broad, pull your hands down, lift up, lean back, or cup the back of your head, elbows forward, push your head into your hands, lift, 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 rise, rise, rise. And then hands back down, move back just to all fours position, and pause. From all fours, tuck your toes, turn your knees, seated side twists. Extend your right hand a little bit forward and dome your left hand. Push your arms straight, fill into your upper back, but push your knees forward to send your hips further back. Then start to twist your torso, 
towards the center of your mat. And then hands down, tuck the toes, lift the knees, and send the knees the other way to the right. Left hand just a little bit forward, right hand on fingertips. Fill into your upper back, push your knees forward, scoot your hips further back, fill the rib cage high, and start to twist over towards the left. This time, just use this position to roll onto your back. Wiggle your way to the center of your mat again. And by keeping the arms vertical, it gives you the chance to broaden the upper back and make that the heaviest part of your torso pushing into the floor. So the low back lifts slightly. Then lift your feet to the height of your knees and turn your legs halfway to the left, arms halfway to the right. Push your arms straight. Move your knees a little bit further back, and then come back up and go the other way. Legs towards the right, arms to the left. And then come back up, turn your palms towards your face, bend your elbows, touch your fingers down like a chin-up bar position. Then one by one, tap your feet to the floor. Keeping your low back lifted, but toning your abdominals, even with the low back slightly lifted. So the front abs tone, the side abs, but also the low back tones as well. And you can gently drag your foot back as you touch it on the floor. And when you pull back, the leg engages, but the abdominals join in for the party as well. And pause with both feet up and then five times, both feet together, touch down and up down, up, three more, and two, down, and up, and last one. And then keep the hands as they are, feet come down, lift your hips up for bridge pose. Classic bridge, lift your hips up super, 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 super high. Bow spring bridge, keep your belly lifted and drop your hips low with your elbows pointing straight up or broaden through your upper back, push your head down, push your upper back down and allow your hips to just hover away from the floor. Then keep your belly lifted, low back lifted, bring the hips all the way down, extend your right leg up into the air, hold the back of your thigh and work your leg a little bit straighter. Then bend your knee, foot down and switch sides. Hold the back of your thigh, left hand, or left leg, pardon me, both hands, and work your leg straighter. Then bend your left knee, lift both feet, hold both knees, freedom position. Keep your upper back broad. When you hook your kneecaps with your palms, push your knees away from your torso so your arms straighten and your upper back gets fully broad. At the same time, pull from your knees down into your hips with your hands so your thigh bones plug in. The final option is hold the backs of your thighs from the outside and just work both legs straighter. Maybe you're like me and you get into full shake them a bake mode then re-bend the knees one by one slide your legs long and for years and years i practiced and taught with the palms of my hands facing up 
And what I would do would be squeeze the shoulder blades on the back, but I found through bowspring, it's actually quite relaxing to have the palms face down and to widen the upper back so there's more surface area. There's more foundation. And anytime you feel that the foundation is more solid, you'll feel more secure, more relaxed, and ultimately more open. <laughs>